Good morning, everyone, and once again, welcome to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. And Lenny, thank you. Great insight. Lenny, a lot of what you said, I agree with. You know, I think the owners have a, a bigger plan than just responding to 2020 coronavirus. I think that's been the idea. They were looking for a way to go about it. And Corona provided them the forum. Good morning, everybody. We're going to talk about this offer. We'll see how close we really are now to a baseball season. Or are we still far away? Uh, you know, the one thing Lenny talked about this morning that I have... I, I, I just got to expand on it a little bit. And, it, and I was reading yesterday, and, and maybe... Aunt Jemima syrup does offend people. Maybe Uncle Ben's rice makes you nauseous. It just seems like, and Lenny mentioned, will the Redskins change their name? You know, I've got a lot of friends who are of the same race and a lot of friends who are not of the same race. And when you break it down, they're my friends, period. It can be a different religion. It can be a different political affiliation. I mean, if you, for example, are a Trump supporter, then you are at odds with a lot of people. Likewise, if you are anti-Trump, you are at odds with a lot of people. Does it make for protestable issues? Does race make for protestable issues? It has. Being sensitive to others is so important. Knowing where we are as a country, where we're going as a country is so important. It's just like everything since Corona, emotions have been heightened. And the thing with baseball, I kept thinking, this is a way to return some normalcy. You've been hearing for years. We've watched it. We've watched free agents. A good example, Yasiel Puig. Yasiel Puig became a free agent. Remember last year he was traded from the Reds? He's been traded several times in the last few years. The Dodgers coveted him as a top prospect. He let his emotions show way too much at times. And they trade him away. And then the Reds trade him to Cleveland. And then he's a free agent. But he's a good ball player. And he's not been signed as a free agent. Why? Because according to Puig, according to Puig, the contract offers have just not, well, been to his liking. They've not been high enough an offer. And so Puig has not signed. This is going to become the norm. And to go along with what Lenny said, how many jobs are there in Major League Baseball? You got a 25 man roster, you got 30 teams. Right? So you've got what? 750 Major League roster spots without expansion. And Major League owners are paying salaries to Trout, to the Machados, to different players in. Big amount. You know, Mookie Betts signs the one-year deal with the Dodgers. And I think you're still going to see the greats of the game demand and receive those kind of salaries. But what about the mid-range player? The player like Yasiel Puig, who is not, arguably, a superstar, but who is arguably a good player. I can see the owners through what's going on with just him as an example as we go forward weed out 
the Yasiel Puig type players bring up the triple A, double A player prospects and they'll run that cycle. There are a lot of Yasiel Puig type players. Every team has at least one, two, three, four, or five. Because every team isn't loaded with just every position a superstar. And I can see the owners weeding it out, waiting it out, and now they have a reason. We're not making the money. Corona hit us hard. Just a thought. And how much of that, as we started the show, will then lead to are we being racial in our decisions? Are we being prejudiced for whatever reason? Is it because he's not an American? I I just, I can see so much being made of non signings that may have nothing to do with racial decisions and everything to do with monetary decisions. And it's the slant a lot of times that the press puts on the story. Yesterday, it broke. We're close to a deal. John Heyman's all over Twitter. We're close to a deal. We're, every hour, there was a new tweet. How close we were to a deal. It made it read as if we fans thought, oh, by Thursday morning when we hear Arnie on the podcast, we're going to have a deal. We don't. Major League Baseball sent the proposal to the Player Association on Wednesday. Manfred went out flying to Arizona. I've said this for weeks. This negotiation process should have been going on in April and May and not in June. The owners dropped the ball. And it's not able to be picked up because April and May are gone. But Manfred flies out to Arizona, knocks on the door of Tony Clark. They met. It's reported they made significant negotiations. I don't know. I don't believe everything I read in the press, especially in 2020. I don't. I am less trustful of the press than I have ever been in my life. I think it's something to say, okay, that's reported, I wonder what's true, but I don't think it's okay to say any longer, okay, that's reported, and it must be true. The days of Walter Cronkite broadcasting the news are over. And it's the slant they want to give it, and Americans, for some reason, are like amoeba sponges and we just absorb it and assume that it's true. Oh my gosh. So I don't know if we are close or not close. I do know as I wake up this morning, I do know as I prepare for this podcast, we don't have a deal. The league supposedly is offering full pro rata. They want the players to waive any grievances, extended playoffs, 18 team playoffs, excuse me, 16 team playoffs, I read my number wrong, 60 game season that would conclude around September 27th and the players want more, it's said this morning, and I don't know how true that is, but it does give full proration to salaries, and so here's the deal, what's the big deal with playing 10 more games? Ten more games. Make it 70. And let's be let's close the deal. The way the press is portraying it now, notice how I said that, is that we are ten games apart. If it weren't for the ten games, we'd have a deal. I can't there's more to it than that. Come on. And so, we got to look at it, where we are, what can we do. I, I said this yesterday. I said it the day before. I'll say it tomorrow. 
I've practiced law. I've been a judge. I know what I'm talking about. If you really want a settlement, put these people in a room and don't let them leave until they've reached a deal. That will get a settlement. Either they'll wear down, they'll get tired of looking at each other, or they'll really get down to business and work it out, and it'll kill Twitter and press reporters because it'll be done and announced and they won't have a clue it's happening and oh boy, I would like that. It would be so refreshing to get a report from MLB that comes from MLB without getting the opine of reporters before it ever is announced. And they could do that. But you know, it's like they don't want to do that. You know, it's like They want to stir this rotten pot. And that's exactly what they've been doing. I mean, Andre and I talked about it. We talked about it with callers. Feel free to call this morning if you'd like. 919-922-9093. But what has happened is nothing. And I'd like to talk about players. I really would. I I think it'd be really cool to sit here and talk about something else. And I'm going to talk about something else in a moment. But if they do agree on a deal, the plan is also for players to report to spring training by June 29. Now that's 11 days away. Three full weeks of spring training. Most teams would train in their own home cities now because it's June before starting the regular season on July 19, which is about 11 days prior to the NBA tipping off their playoffs in Orlando, where they have a plan. They have a plan worked out. So... We'll see how much progress is actually being made. We'll see if the two sides actually agree on something. But we got to face the facts. We're getting to a point where you've either got to use the toilet or get up. It's time to get something started. You got to finish the job. If we don't have some plan in place, really soon, there will be no plan in place at all. Now, I I read yesterday on Twitter, I live really close, and you've heard me talk about this before, I live really close to a minor league facility, the Texas Rangers facility, go there a lot, I mean, I've got to see, I've made a lot of friends there, Uh, got to see a lot of great talent come up through the years, whether it be a Ranger player, a Nationals player, Astros player, I could go on, Brewers, I got pictures I've posted on this site with Keston Hira, I could post more, okay, but every team in the Carolina League, Kansas City, White Sox, I've, I've, I've shaken hands and gotten autographs from Eloy Jimenez, I've done the same with Luis Robert, Nick Madrigal, I could go on, I mean, I, I, I probably will, right? And so the, they're called the Wood Ducks. Interesting name. But the Wood Ducks are doing something really neat, and we'll see how it goes. But on June 29th, they are having hosting a doubleheader for all local Eastern North Carolina seniors, baseball players, to play in a doubleheader, sort of like an all-star game. Limited seating, but fans can go. I'm going. Okay, I'm going. And we'll see how it goes. But you know what? People are clamoring, and they're charging $10 a ticket. People are clamoring for some baseball. I just believe, owners, that ratings will be out of sight if you will work it out people fans the fans average attention span is very similar to a gnats 
you know, those little flying insects. 